Omo phones and Omo graphs don't exist in the Yoruba language, but Omo, Omo names do. Hello everyone, it's Adironke again. I hope your day is going well. Today I'd like to talk about homophones, homonyms and homographs. So homophones, homographs and homonyms. Uh, homophones and homographs don't exist in the Yoruba language but homonyms do. However, we have semi-homographs and I'm going to talk about them soon. Among the three, homonyms are the ones that exist. Homophones and homographs don't exist. I suppose the next question would be, why don't they exist? Well, in the Yoruba language, if a word is pronounced one way, it has to be spelt that way and vice versa. Because the Yoruba language is a tonal language, if a word is spelt one way, it has to be pronounced that way. And if a word is pronounced one way, it has to be spelt that way. Let's start by defining homophone and homograph so that we can see why they don't exist in the Yoruba language. Homophone comes from the Greek word homos, which means same, and phone, which means voice. Homophones have similar pronunciations, but different spellings and meanings. So, similar pronunciation. This is the English language. A word that there are words that have similar pronunciations, but different spellings and meanings, and they are regarded as homophones. One, for example, which relates to the number one, sounds very similar to one. The past tense of win meet you know getting together with someone sounds pretty similar to meat animal product as food see which is to look sounds very similar to see a body of water two you know which is a motion or a direction sounds very similar to two which means as well or in addition and it sounds and both sound similar to two as in the number so you know in the english language on the, the linguistics body words like this c c one one meet me they are regarded as homophones now homographs the word homograph comes from the greek word homos which means same and grapho, which means right. Homographs have similar spellings, but different pronunciations and meanings. Homographs have similar spellings, grapho, you know, right, but different pronunciations and meanings. An example would be M I N U T E, you know, you can pronounce it as minute which would be 60 seconds and it can be minute which is extremely small similar <laughs> spellings different pronunciations different meanings also c-o-n-t-e-n-t -E you could say content which is happy or satisfied and you can say content which is all that is contained inside something or like a material, the way that I am a content creator. I'm content with being a content creator. So same spelling, different pronunciations and meanings, different words, <laughs> so to say. It's the, same, it's, it's the same way of writing it, but depending on the context, you know, they can be words that are different from the other p-e-r-m-i-t is another example you can say permit you know to give someone permission i permit you to go out and you can say permit the official document so let's say you're driving permits you know 
I permit you to have your driving permit. So, similar spelling, different pronunciation, different meanings. The, uh, D E S E R T, you can say desert, which is a hot, harried region. And you can say desert, which is to leave. You can say desert, which is a hot, harried region. And you can say desert, which means to leave. So, you know, they don't exist in the Yoruba language. I suppose it's easier to explain something when you are trying to prove that it exists as opposed to proving that it doesn't exist. Because apart from the fact that it's a tonal language, I don't know how best to explain it, but these are two separate languages. The, the rules that apply to them are not similar. You know, so homophones and homographs don't exist because the Yoruba language is a tonal language. If something follows a tone, then it has to be written in accordance with that tone. And if something is written one way, it has to be pronounced that way. You can't say ED and then say, oh, there's a version of it that is ED. <laughs> you can't uh, really go crazy with the spellings. If you say ABO, you know, you can't say, oh, but there's a version of it. ABO is plate. You can't say, oh, there's a version of it that is ABO and it means uh, a ball or something. <laughs> no, if it's written one way, it has to be pronounced that way. Now let's go into what we have. What do we have then if we don't have homophones and homographs in and of themselves? So in and of itself, we don't have homophones. In and of itself, we don't have homographs. We have homonyms. We have homonyms. Homonym comes from the Greek word Omos, which is same, and onoma, which is name. Homonyms have similar spellings and pronunciations, but different meanings. So we do have homonyms. Homonyms have similar spellings and pronunciations, but different meanings. Take the word bat, for example. When you write bat, it's, it's spelled that way, it's pronounced that way. But depending on the context, the meanings may vary. If you say bat, it could be a tool that is used to hit a ball, an implement that is used to hit a ball on a court. If you say bat, you might also be referring to a nocturnal flying mama that you typically see at night, especially in Nigeria. Um, lie, for example, it could be to recline, you know, lying down, you know, to lie down, and it could be to tell a falsehood, to lie. Same spelling, same pronunciation, different meanings. If you say bark, for example, it could be a tree's out layer or outer layer. It could also be the sound that a dog makes. Right. It could be correct. You might be saying, oh, that's right. That's correct. And you can also be saying, go to the right, which is the direction opposite of left. If you say, well, you know, it could be, you could be referring to being in good, good health or good spirits. You could also be referring to a source of water in the ground. You would find a lot of wells in Nigeria. They are probably in every gated compound, you know, so that's that. I'll give you examples. I have already treated, uh, some like ED. I've done ED and there's varying meanings that it could have uh, apart from buttocks and reason i've done pa you know that's another homonym it could be to kill it could be to turn off it could be to extinguish it could be to execute <laughs> you know it could be used in the context of lying i've done pa and i'll be doing more in the near future examples of yoruba homonyms if you say ago Ago is a salutation that you say when you want to um, go into a place, go into, now it's really, people say more when they want to go into shrines or like even a Baba Lao's house, but uh, it's, it used to be so common, the, the salutation that you say when you want to enter a person's house, um, and when you say Ago, you're saying like, you know, I'm coming, um, you, could, you could say that it also means make way. When you say it, you're saying that you're coming, 
you are announcing your presence. You're announcing your presence. You're telling them to, um, it's, it's sort of like a tidy up type salutation, you know, tidy up. Um, I'm coming. So let's say it's a husband and wife, you know, having their private moment and you want to step in or it's a family having their time and you want to step in or, um, you basically, you don't know what the person is doing. So it's sort of like a polite, I go, I go, I go, I go, you know, is you're just saying, I'm announcing my presence, but also giving you the heads up that, you know, whatever you're doing, um, tidy up. Basically, if there's something I shouldn't be saying when I step in, tidy up, you know, put yourself in order, I'm arriving. Um, you know, I'm announcing my presence. Don't be taken by surprise. If you see me, you know, I'm arriving, I'm stepping in now. I go for those who listen to like, you know, Cuban <laughs> or uh, Orisha songs, you know, as frequently as I do, especially when it comes to like, you know, chance for Elegbara, you know, say they say Elegua, uh, Elegbara, you might hear lots of I go, I go. I go ile, I go, I go ile, I go ya, I go ile. So, I go. I go could also be coop or pen for confining poetry. It could also be coop or pen for confining poetry. So, this same word means two different things. Again, same word, same spelling, same pronunciation, whatever, but different meanings. ED is another one. It could be botox or reason. I've done ED. Sa, you know, it could be sa asha, which is spreader cloth. And you typically, in Nigeria, you know, washing machines are a little bit more scarce than they are in America. So you typically wash your clothes with your hands and you spread them outside. Sa, it could be spread. It could also be run. Sa, sa, you know, sa, it could also be run. Wa, it could be come. Wa, you know, you see somebody, you signal, you signal to them. Wa, if they are older than you, of course, you say ewa. Um, and if you're looking for something, you know, monwa, I show me monwa, but I'm, I'm looking for my cloth. I'm looking for my shoe. Wa can also be look for. So these are just four of the many homonyms that exist in the Yoruba language. Many. So what's the reason? Why do people say that to homophones and homographs exist in the Yoruba language? Well, these are people who completely forget <laughs> that tone marks are important parts of proper spelling in the Yoruba language. Words could mean completely different things depending on the tone marks that are on them. So, you know, Tone marks are, so how do you differentiate between a gugu and a gugu if you don't put the correct tone marks on the word? So they completely ignore the tone marks and completely ignore the different pronunciations. They just take the base words and they say, oh, we have homophones and we have homographs in the Yoruba language. No. Yoruba words are only correctly spelled when they include tone marks because it is a tonal language. Now, if you're on social media and you don't, let's not deny the fact that the kind of keyboard that we have and the, you know, Eurocentric, you know, or slash American internet that we have makes it a little bit difficult to, <laughs> to be interested in learning the proper Yoruba tone marks, first of all, and then to type them, you know, it's a little bit more difficult on the keyboard. I copy and paste there. It's so if I have to do a code, you know, code something equals something, something, and I start to learn the codes in order to type just one letter, it is extremely stressful for me. It's not, it's not as free flowing as it is when you're typing in English. I suppose that will be one of the challenges. And that's one of the main reasons why important languages and the gifts that they have to have are uh, just slowly, you know, people are just slowly, <laughs> I suppose, learning them less. <laughs> but anyway, that's a discussion for another video. What we have are semi-homographs. 
Are semi-homographs <laughs> recognized in the English language? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but for the purpose of the teaching, I came up with them, you know. Um, semi-homographs definitely exist in the Yoruba language. What do I mean by semi-homographs? Words with similar base letters, but different tone marks. Similar base letters. And by similar, I mean similar, not O, O, you know, people would often say Oko, Oko, you know, O and O are completely different letters. So when I say similar base letters, I mean similar base letters, but different tone marks, different tone marks, which results in different spellings, pronunciations, meanings, and uses semi-homographs which i came up with <laughs> don't say semi-homographs in your english class your teacher would be so freaked out like where did you learn that so uh don't take this beyond the yoruba cortex semi-homographs are words with similar base letters but different tone marks which results in different spellings pronunciations meanings and uses an example would be o gi u and ni the four letters that combine now if you put a, you know the do on the o and you put the mi on the u you get ogun if you put nothing on the o and you put, which is which would be re the re tone mark and you put mi on the u you get ogun if you put do on the o and you put do on the u you get ogun so similar base letters, different tone marks, therefore you get different spellings, different pronunciations, different meanings, different uses. Agbara, for example, a torrent, you know, water that is flowing, you know, with, you, you could say high, high currency than, you know, the typical Agbara, a torrent. Dodomi are the tone marks that make up Agbara. If you put nothing on the A and you put me, the me tone mark on the second A and you put nothing on the last A, which would be Re, you know, you get Re, Mi, Re, Agbara, Agbara. If you, if you don't understand the tone marks yet, the three tone marks that make up the Yoruba word, typically, I have a video on that that I'll probably link to this one. Take re 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 e gun gun. For example, there are no tone marks when you when you um we have do re mi for the re we don't put anything on the vowels. So that's why there's nothing on e gun gun re re re. If you if you say e gun gun you know re mi mi similar base letters but different tone marks which results in different spellings, pronunciations, meanings, and uses. A gungun bone is definitely different from a gungun, which is an ancestral spirit in the body of a living person. It's like a, <laughs> it's a much greater phenomenon than just mediumship, you know, connecting with a spirit to, especially of, you know, a, a person who has passed away to see, how they to feel how they feel and such you know in mediumship it's a little the agugu is a much um i i i i have talked about it you know i talked about it in the ego and larry video so maybe i'll link that one too ika dodo would be wickedness or a wicked person dore ika would be finger so when you, you can say semi-homographs are what exist. Not homographs. Not homographs. Because homograph will suggest the same spelling. Tone marks are an integral part of spelling in the Yoruba language. So they are not the same spelling. You have to remember that. Semi-homographs are what exist. Words with similar base letters, but different tone marks, which results in different spellings, pronunciations, meanings, and uses. I'll be making um, several semi-homograph related videos, you know, in the very, very near future. I'm already preparing them. So uh, expect to see a lot of 
uh, semi omogra and it's a it's a really cool way to learn words and the differences you know between and among semi homographs too you know you can just pick up several random words in those videos and know that when it's pronounced this way although they have similar base letters if they are written and pronounced this way then they're different from you know if they have if they are written and pronounced that way again writing <laughs> involves tone marks you know proper writing involves tone marks if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask i'm more than happy to help uh, please like and share and subscribe and thank you for your support please continue to support my channel and i'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye Oh,